Modern technologies like satellites, radar, and lasers allow us to measure great distances with high levels of precision. We know the distances between cities, the circumference of the Earth, and even the distance to the moon down to the meter. 2,000 years ago, distances in the hundreds of kilometers were measured in footsteps, but that did not stop one Greek mathematician from calculating Earth's circumference with incredible accuracy. Eratosthenes was a Greek polymath who excelled at astronomy, mathematics, and geography. He lived in Egypt during the 3rd century BC, and among his many accomplishments was being the first to create a projection of the known world, the first to calculate Earth's axial tilt, and the first to measure Earth's circumference. Contrary to popular belief, most humans before the Enlightenment did not think the Earth was flat. A spherical Earth was first proposed by Pythagoras over 2500 years ago. The strongest evidence of a spherical Earth available to ancient Greeks was lunar eclipses because Earth's shadow on the Moon was curved. Only circular shaped objects cast shadows that don't have edges, so the ancient Greeks proposed Earth's shape to be a sphere. Working at the Library of Alexandria, the center of knowledge in the ancient Mediterranean, Eratosthenes knew and understood the spherical Earth argument. Starting with this assumption, he went about calculating Earth's circumference. While his exact method is not known because his writings were lost when the Alexandria Library fell into disrepair, a simplified version was written down by another astronomer, Cleomedes. Eratosthenes learned that on the summer solstice, June 21st, there was a town in southern Egypt called Syene, where objects did not cast a shadow at solar noon, the time of the day when the sun is at its highest point in the sky. Even the bottom of a well was illuminated by direct sunlight because the sun was directly overhead. In Alexandria on the summer solstice, however, Eratosthenes observed that objects did cast a shadow at noontime. Eratosthenes measured the angle of the shadows to be 7.2 degrees, meaning the sun was 82.8 degrees above the horizon and not 90 degrees like in Syene. He also assumed the sun to be far away from Earth, meaning its rays would be parallel when they reach Earth. Combining the parallel sun rays and the 7.2 degree shadows in Alexandria, Eratosthenes calculated that Alexandria is 7.2 degrees north of Syene because a line intersecting two parallel lines has equal alternate interior angles. More simply, the shadow angle at Alexandria is the same as the angle between Alexandria and Syene at the center of the Earth. Given that a circle is 360 degrees, Eratosthenes understood that by dividing 7.2 by 360, the distance between Alexandria and Syene was 1 50th of Earth's circumference. To find out the entire Earth's circumference, he needed to know the distance between the two cities. This was easier said than done 2,000 years ago, but luckily the Egyptian government employed people called Bemetis, who were trained to measure great distances by counting their steps. Eratosthenes hired a Bemetis to walk between Alexandria and Syene, and he reported the distance to be the equivalent of 785 kilometers. Using this knowledge, Eratosthenes multiplied 785 by 50 and found Earth's circumference around the poles to be 39,250 kilometers. Eratosthenes' result was quite accurate with an error of just 1.9% as we now know Earth's polar circumference to be 40,008 kilometers. With Cleomedes' retelling of the calculation though, there are some issues. First, Syene is not on the Tropic of Cancer, where the sun is directly overhead at noon on the June solstice. Second, Alexandria is not directly north of Syene, as they are located on different meridians or lines of longitude. It is still possible to calculate Earth's circumference with those locations, but it would have been more complicated. Despite these discrepancies, with better inputs, we can use the same method to calculate Earth's circumference. First, find two cities located at the same longitude. For this example, we'll use Omaha, Nebraska and Houston, Texas. The distance between these cities is 1,278 kilometers. Using a sun angle calculator, we can find the angle the sun is above the horizon on May 1st at local noon. For Omaha, the solar angle is 63.9 degrees, and for Houston, it is 75.4 degrees. By subtracting each from 90 degrees, the shadow angles for Omaha and Houston are 26.1 and 14.6 degrees, respectively. 
The difference between each angle is 11.5 degrees. Therefore, Omaha and Houston are separated by 11.5 degrees of latitude. By dividing 360 by 11.5 and then multiplying by 1,278, you would get 40,007 kilometers, quite close to Earth's actual polar circumference. You can even measure the sun's angle from your house and find Earth's circumference on any day of the year. This is possible because every day there is a latitude on Earth where the sun will be 90 degrees above the horizon. Also known as the subsolar point, this location moves between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn throughout the year. On the equinoxes, the subsolar point occurs at the equator. The subsolar point occurs at the Tropic of Cancer on the June solstice, and the Tropic of Capricorn on the December solstice. Because the shadow angle and the angle between you and the subsolar point are alternate interior angles, the shadow angle at your location is equal to the angle between you and the latitude of the subsolar point that day. To measure the sun and shadow angles, take a straight object like a yardstick and place it perpendicular to the ground. Finding the time of solar noon can be accomplished three ways. The easiest way is to look it up for your location. Otherwise, draw a line from north to south through the object you're using to measure the sun's shadow. When the sun's shadow lines up with the north-south line, it is solar noon. The final way is to watch the sun's shadow and take the measurement when the shadow is at its shortest length. When the sun is at its highest point for the day, that is when shadows will be at their shortest length. When it's solar noon, measure the length of the sun's shadow from the post. Along with the measurement of the post and the 90 degree angle between them, you can find the shadow angle by either using an online triangle calculator or the equation shown below. The shadow angle is the degrees of latitude between you and the point on Earth where the sun will be directly overhead for that day. The distance between you and that point can be found by multiplying the shadow angle by 111.13 kilometers, since that is the distance between each degree of latitude. To approximate Earth's polar circumference, divide 360 by the shadow angle and multiply by the distance. With measurements and angles, 2,000 years ago, humans were able to learn something new about the world. Simply put, all three examples involve finding an angle around a circle and the distance on Earth's surface between two locations separated by that angle. Combined, we can determine the entire circumference of the Earth with a great degree of accuracy.